Oh, wow. As far as anyone knows, I'm naked under here. So don't, don't look. <laughs> uh, buddy, we're back on live. Do you hear that? We're back on live. It is what it is. Um, TikTok, do me a favor. Send the notifications out to everybody so they know I'm here. Thank you. My boy. There we go. Did y'all miss me for like two seconds? TikTok said, oh, let, me pull, let, me, let me pull you into my office real quick. I've got, I've got to talk to you for a second. <laughs> I, had to, I had to talk with the TikTok bosses real quick. They were like, you can't say those words on your life. And I'm like, what words? And they're like, something, something, something. And I'm like, did you hear the context though? The context, come on. And they were like, fine, we'll replay and watch the context. And then they went and go did their little review. And they were like, oh, we, we saw what you were talking about in the context. Yeah, I guess you weren't being malicious with your words. But you got to be careful. And I was like, all right, cool, whatever. Just give me back my lives. And they were like, all right, cool. Here you go. Don't do that again, though. And I said, whatever, bitch. So now I'm back. <laughs> What's up? Anyway, where were we? Because I'm not... I'm not gonna let up. I, I when I know what the fuck I was talking about, and I'm going to finish my point. I was talking about consequence, right? Introducing consequence to women. You gotta understand. I keep saying this all the time. There's no such thing as a perfect woman. There's absolutely no such thing as um, a, a, a woman that's uh, 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 perfect. You're just gonna meet her, and she's gonna be everything you ever wanted her to be. No. Every single woman comes with a certain degree of baggage. They're all a working, uh, a work in progress, right? They're all, to some degree, a project that you have to work on. Some more than others, but they're all a project. And once you understand what women are, and you actually deal with women for a long period of time, and I'm not just talking about like just going around getting naked here. And there. I'm talking about like actually having consequential relationship after consequential relationship. Or like you, like me, you just you you know you squeeze a lot of relationships into each other at the same time. You have multiple girlfriends, and you do that over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. It becomes very clear to you that it is quite literally impossible for this perfect woman to exist. Right? It's it's not even again. I'm not saying like oh just you did enough women you find out. No no no. It's like when you really think about how women grow up from little girls, it becomes very clear. The perfect woman is a is a is a facade. It's it's something we've decided to lie to ourselves about, for whatever reason. I blame Disney movies, um, to make ourselves feel better, <laughs> you know. So it's not real. Every woman, you have to do the hard job of teaching the concept of consequence, or else you will have a woman that misbehaves. It is what it is. Bro, don't use that hook term again. <laughs> the algorithm doesn't care for the context. Oh, yes, it does. If it didn't, I wouldn't be here right now. So the algorithm does care. You know, well, the, the sensible part of the algorithm. There's two algorithms on TikTok. People don't know that. But that's a different topic entirely. Um, but yeah, the point is, yes, uh, consequence is something you have to introduce to every woman you, you, you meet. Well, not you meet, but the ones you date consequentially, okay? Um, Jace, can you give life experience about backstabbers? It's very easy to spot them. I don't know why people have a hard time figuring out who's going to betray them. It's very easy. One, one, you want to figure out people that will backstab you and betray you and, and Judas you, Judas Iscariot you, right? Just look for the person that has the least tolerance for pain. What makes someone a rat? What makes someone a betrayer, a traitor, right? It's because they don't have the, the pain tolerance to go through the anxiety and the pressure of not turning on you. Because that's what it takes to not turn on someone. Like if, if you and your friend are in trouble, what it would take for you not to snitch on your friend is pain tolerance. Because there's consequences to not snitching. Snitching is what relieves you of that pressure, right? So you got to look out for the people that can't handle pressure. Those are the snitches. Those are the betrayers. Those are the, those are the traitors. Those are the people that will turn on you because they can't handle the heat. 
그 완전히 What age do women uh, date seriously? Men nowadays are so serious. There's no age. Sorry, it's not an age thing. <laughs> not women. What age? It's not an age thing. It's 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 more a you thing than anything. Cause okay, let's break down your mindset here, lady. What do you mean by serious, right? What do you mean by serious? You're really saying you want a man that you don't deserve. To be monogamously exclusive with you. That's what you're saying. You're using the term serious. But what you're really saying is. You want a man you don't deserve. To want only you. And to choose you over everything else. And not choose anyone. <laughs> Dang. Exactly. I read you. I know. But once you understand. And this is why I'm, I'm saying it like this. Because you achieve your goals when you know what they are. The more specific you can be with what you want the better your chances of getting it. So then you start asking yourself a few good questions, right? That I don't deserve. Oh yes, you don't deserve. If you if you if you could get a guy you do deserve, you don't want him. There's a lot of, come on, come on, let's be honest. It's just, it's just me and you talking now. There's a lot of guys in your DMs that you will never give a chance at the time of day. You wanna know why? Because you know you can get them. Because you deserve them. You want the guy that's hard to get. You want the guy that's just out of your reach. You don't want a guy you can grab like this. You want a guy that's just like scraping your fingertip. That's the one you want. But you want, see, that's the thing though. You want that guy to be exclusive with you. But that guy and exclusivity don't go together now, do they? He's elusive. That, that's why you keep running into these guys that aren't serious. I want a guy in my DMs, lol. You want a guy in your DMs to be exclusive with you, right? <laughs> oh, no, there's no guy in your DMs. Fair enough. Good for you. I guess um, I guess the advice for you would be um, hit the gym. I don't know. If, if there's no guys in your DMs, there's only two kind of girls that have no guys in their DMs. The unattractive ones or the very intimidating ones? Which one are you? I intimidate people. Oh, okay, uh, fellas, do me a favor. Go on her profile. See if she's lying. I want to know. Is that's that's a very that's not a common type of woman. Um. Anyway, got a game TikTok like one of your girls. Look, literally, I'd be risen up TikTok. I'm not even kidding. How do you think I just got suspended and came back three minutes later? I'd be risen up TikTok. <laughs> I'd be risen TikTok up, man. Uh, no picture on her profile. Dang. I, I, we'll never know if she's really as intimidating as she says she is. Oh, well. Because, you know, women like to use that word to tell themselves um, that they're better than what is what they want, right? Like, oh, intimidating. Isn't that you're intimidating? Or no one wants you. Let's be honest. Um, bro, I already read that one. How to not be a prey? I just put out for third world countries coming from a good one. Um, get knowledgeable, become knowledgeable. It's it's what makes you Ajabota versus Ajapaku is just it's, it's a it's a gap in knowledge. The more you know, the better. Um, let's see. Jay's poo is back. Yes, I'm back. <laughs> um, let's see. Yo, I just told the girl to go on an actual date because I think it was just friends at first. Well, how did she respond? I want to know. How did she respond? No, like people who backtab story time and break down. Those people who already betrayed you already, uh, don't deal with them again. There's nothing to do there. They already betrayed you. It's over with. Cut off all communication. Cut off all communication. Uh, I joined for a second the last live and it got taken out. That's hilarious. The, the moment you joined, Mafta, everybody, everybody, go bully Asami. He's the bad luck here. <laughs> you know. Um, Jace, what do you think uh, smoking does to your game? Well, it depends on what you're smoking. First of all, second of all, if you're talking about uh, how do we say it on TikTok, Mary Jane, right? Um, I think 
I mean, it depends on what strain you're doing. I know there's like differences in strains and stuff, but for the most part, it just it makes you less um, urgent, which I guess could help your game. The problem with that is you can't be that way 24-7. So I guess short term, but not long term. You know, just aura, Jace. <laughs> aura, indeed. Um, I believe that looks are very important to uh, very important for game. Um, very important is a stretch. They're they they're, they're, they do matter, but very important. I don't know about that. Um. Uh, yeah. Who don't want love? I know, right? Uh, Cap. She's not intimidating. Damn. Ellie, you gonna take that? They said you're not intimidating. That's crazy. Ellie, you gonna take that? That's crazy. Um, Pulley, these are the uh, Twitter girls. Oh, okay. I, I've heard about them. I'm not on Twitter. I don't know what them streets be like. So, but I've heard about them. I, I heard. I heard Twitter is like like softcore corn now. Is that true? Yeah, I, that's not the Twitter I remember from childhood. Um. Uh, Bro, you have no idea how water bending technique helped me so far. <laughs> it was act, it was exactly what I needed. That's good to hear. Um, let's see, boosted my game a thousand percent. Okay, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, nah, Plinto says, "Damn, they're all coming for you, Ellie." Her profile non-existent. That's crazy. Um, Ellie, you gotta defend yourself in these comments. They're they're coming at you, baby. They're 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 coming they're they're coming at you. Um, by the way, I started going to university studying nutrition science. Gonna turn us into monsters. Very good, very good. I appreciate that. Go learn and, and come back and give us news about what we should be eating and how much of it we should be eating. Um, <clears throat> behavioral cues are much more important than looks for sure. Way more important. It's not even close. You can see it in real time how how one affects um, people a lot better than the other, you know. Uh, nutrition plans for school community. Let's go. I, I'd appreciate that, actually. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, bro, do you have any uni advice? How did you bag them when you was in college? I was in college for like one year, first of all. Second of all, the, again, I keep telling you guys, the most important thing for college is literally just be big man on campus. You you got to work on your actual reputation with everybody before you worry about girls. Worry about your social circle. Worry about having a good, clean reputation with other people and having a fun reputation. Like, you want to be the guy that everybody knows, right? That's that. And how do you become that guy? You solve other people's problems. You give value. That's what giving value is. Giving value is just solving other people's problems. You help people solve their problems and you do it without asking for anything in return. Now they're, they're indebted to you. And whenever people are like, whenever you do favors for other people and, you know, they know they owe you and you're just like, oh, don't worry about it, man. Instant friendship. But in, at the same time, you, you get the word spread about you that you're a good person. You're a chill dude. You're awesome. Not, now you have a bunch of fans that are speaking highly of you in front of girls without even saying anything to them. That's how it works. All right. Just work on your reputation in school. Did Michael Jackson have game? Definitely. He had aura, but don't know about game. Um, I mean, he had to have some game. He was, I think he married Elvis Presley's daughter at some point or something like that. Like, but yeah, I mean, he had, like, I would say he had game because you can't have aura without having some level of game. In order to manage being Michael Jackson, you have to have some deep understanding of human psychology. You think he, you think he just came on stage and just stood there for five minutes straight without doing or saying anything for no reason? You know how long he probably practiced that? Just that alone? Going through the motions, understanding, okay, this is... Uh, Michael Jackson was amazing with timing. To, to have that deep an understanding of timing, you have to have some game. You have to have some deep level of psychology. Of how people behave. And what they respond to. You know? Like, every dance move was accounted for. Every note he hit in his songs was accounted for. He had game. Definitely had game. Um, let's see. Not just normal smoking because I notice it makes me more of a social recluse every time I stop doing it. My game improves by tenfold. Then stop doing it. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. 
LMAO, I'm not everybody's cup of tea, and that's okay. Cool, cool. But I know I'm attractive. All right. <laughs> um, let's see. You heard that Russia got attacked. There's a chance of World War Three. What are you planning to do if America does a draft? Uh, all of that doesn't matter anyway, to be honest. Besides, why are we still worrying about World War Three? Like, oh, with this war. The World War Three already started, first of all, years ago, in fact. Like, 2008 is when it started, I would say. Um, and those wars, these wars that are happening now, they're not necessarily going to be fought physically. It's not going to be, like, missiles and tanks and guns. Nah. The real war is propaganda. And that's been happening for a while now. So don't worry about drafts. Don't worry about that shit. The, and besides, the best soldiers aren't going to be the ones that train in some military barracks somewhere. It's going to be the ones that know how to influence other people. That's, that's like, think about it. Where do you think, if at all, I had to be drafted, right? Which, by the way, I don't, I'm not even sure I can be. But let's assume I could be into the American military. Where do you think they would rather have me? On the front lines or influencing 60,000 people? This is a specialized skill. But that's me personally, though. You got to figure out, like, you got to think about it like that. No matter how this war is going, whether you like it or not, you're already a soldier. And whatever skill you have is going to be used in the war. That's how this shit goes. Okay? It's already, it's already happening. It's already done. <laughs> I'm, I'm already a soldier of some army. Every action I take is helping or hurting someone else out there. It is what it is. That's, that's existence for you. So don't worry about those, you know, oh, World War Three, this and that, the, 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 the port strike and all this stuff. Ultimately, it's all inconsequential. These things will happen in different cycles, you know, over four to seven year cycles. It'll separate the wheat from the shaft. Uh, the, the weak men that have been pretending to be strong will be exposed. It always happens. But for the most part, you'll be fine. <laughs> Jace, how to use marriage as a smart move or how to do it in what conditions? What makes marriage, you know, work is the fact that you enter it with the correct frame as the leader, uh, as the agreed upon leader, not just you trying to be the leader, but she also willingly, overtly follows your lead. That is the biggest thing about it. Like, make sure she knows that you are the fucking man of the house and that everything goes according to your plan and goes through you, right? Even if she decides to have an input, it ultimately comes down to you. That's the most important thing in a marriage is that you are the head. You are the head of the household. You are the decision maker, the final decision maker, right? And then on top of that, you have to make sure that you create a system, a, a, a structure around you and her so that you can achieve whatever goals that you want to achieve with your marriage. Every marriage should be built on some lifelong goal. Like, you want to know why marriages don't last a lifetime? Because the motherfuckers never have a lifetime goal, a lifetime mission, Right? The, the only way to make something last a lifetime is to have a plan for it for a lifetime. A, a plan that will last a lifetime. Right? If, if your plan is just have kids, your marriage is going to end around the 20-year mark. Want to know why? Because around then is when the kids leave the house. 18 to 20. And, and now you understand why most marriages end either before the kids are born, right after the kids turn 5 during the formative years, Right after the kids turn teenagers before they go into high school or right after they get out of college. Right? Or just before they get out of college sometimes, right? Now you understand why you can almost always predict when marriages end. It's always very predictable. Because it's always gonna be a reflection of whatever goals both people had in mind. Right? So if your goal is let's just make sure we have as many kids as possible, then it'll be centered around the kids. And at which point, when the kids become adults, there's no reason <laughs> to be married anymore. So it'll naturally end. But if you make your, your marriage goal something more lifelong, like, uh, you know, uh, being with each other in a way that improves each other eternally, spiritually, psychologically, physically, um, um, 
seeking to create the next generation of people in a way that they can also be equipped with the tools to create the next generation of people after them. Now you have a goal in mind with each other that will last both of your lifetimes and more. And a mission that will continue to be carried out even if one of you leaves the other. Right? In death, I mean. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that that's like the first most important thing. Roland mentioned this in preventive medicine. That's literally a timeline. Exactly. Like, yeah, he talks about the timeline of how people usually break up and stuff like that. Yeah. But that that's the most important thing. Make sure. Make sure. That. Um, your thinking of marriage is something that will last a lifetime and treating it like it is. You know, that's a big point to it. All right, I got to scroll back up. Um, one, two, three, I don't know. Um, honestly, running game while high is hard for me. I prefer being sober. I keep telling people, sober, sober you is the best you. And it's the you you train. It's the you you train. Whenever you run game while you're sober, there we go. Whenever you run you while you're sober, you're you're adding into yourself the real you, not this you that comes out whenever you're under the influence of something. You know what I mean? Brave real cues are much more important than looks, yes. Astrology is just another form of communication from God, just like evolution and physics. Literally. It's just a, it's literally just another math. The fact that it's not taught in schools is wild. Really, like of all the subjects we should have taught, we never get taught the most important ones. There's no financial literacy 101 for, which by the way should be taught like the first grade, financial literacy. Money is such an important tool, probably the most useful tool we interact with on a daily basis in the world. It makes no sense. We don't really get taught about it till, for some of us, never, depending on how your life goes. You just you just get thrust into the world and start using money, but you never get taught anything about it? What the fuck? First grade, you should start learning financial literacy 101. What is money? Why does it, why does it exist? How to use it? What is it for? How it behaves? How people interact with it? Shit like that, right? And then astrology should be another one. The movement of the celestial bodies. You know how important that shit is? Do you know how they can predict... The ocean's currents and the rise in and in, in drops in sea levels with the fucking movement of the moon alone. And that's just the moon. We're not talking about the stars. We're not talking about the other planets. Just the moon affects the way water moves on this planet. And we don't get taught nothing about that shit. Whole time we walk around, we're 70% water, bro. So if the moon affects the fucking seas and the oceans, you don't think it affects you? You can eat a burger from McDonald's and it'll literally change the trajectory of the rest of your day because it'll it'll affect your gut health that much and as a result affect your brain health that much. That's a fucking however the fuck much it is these days. Is a McChicken still a dollar? Probably not. Inflation is fucking all over us, right? It's it's a however many dollars McChicken and, it'll, and it can affect your day, right? You, you take a scoop of pre-workout and it'll literally change your brain chemistry. Right, but the moon is just this thing that shines light at night. That's all it does. Come on, come on. <laughs> Astrology is one of the most important things you'll ever learn in this life. By far, one of the most important things. But you know, don't don't tell anyone I told you. <laughs> it's math, baby. It's math. It's an algorithm. We're all we're living. We're like really remember this. We are living in a fucking video game, and it's a game full of laws and rules that govern it. And no one ever sat you down to tell you there's rules to this shit. Go learn the rules. Go 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 through the tutorial portion of the game. Like imagine how crazy that is. Just picking up a controller and just start playing and you don't know the controls. Crazy shit, man. Crazy. Anyway, <clears throat> why do people still take down Chris Brown after years of now there are a new girl allegations. Uh, what are we talking about? Chris Brown? Why people still hate him? Because people people need to dunk on people that have done bad in the public eye because it makes them feel better. It's like, what's going on with Diddy right now? I can, you know, agree that Diddy is a fucked up individual that allowed all the power to go to his head and as a result felt like he could violate the rights of others and break the laws of God, right? 
With that said though, I'm not saying that because I think I'm better than him. In fact, I can very easily see how a person like me can become a person like him. Like that. Very easily. Oh, it'll be so easy. But I'm like, I've accepted that I have that level of evil within me as well. The people that are delusional, that try to act like they don't have that level of evil in them, are the people that are trying to be like, yeah, Diddy, he's a bad person. Because they somehow think that making Diddy, or in this case Chris Brown, guilty, somehow makes them feel more innocent. Which is, is not how it works. Right? That's being able to point that a glass of water isn't 100% pure doesn't make you a glass of pure water. Does that make sense? It's like that story in the Bible of Jesus when, you know, he was preaching and a group of men dragged a woman with them to him. And they're like, under the law of Moses, we got to stone this bitch to death. We got to stone her to death. And, and they're like, Jesus, what are you going to do about it? Something, something, something. You, you said you're the son of God, right? What, what, what say ye? What about the law of Moses? And he, and he squats on the ground and starts writing in the sand. And they're waiting for him. They're waiting for him. They're waiting, waiting, waiting. He's just writing in the sand. And then without even picking his head up while he's still writing in the sand, he goes, Hey, any of you that have never sinned, ye that are without sin, ye that have never done a bad thing a day in your life, strike her. Be the first to strike her with your stone. And what's the story? One by one, they all drop their stones and walk away. And then he walks up to her and he goes, Hey, where are your detractors? And she goes, My Lord, I have none. I have no detractors. And then he goes, Well, neither do I. Go and sin no more. That story has many lessons within it. But one of the most important ones within that is every single person there had done something wrong. Right? Well, by the way, what was the crime of the woman? They caught her in the act of adultery. That was what they wanted to stone her to death for. They caught her sleeping with another man that wasn't her husband. And they felt like, well, they didn't feel like it, but, I mean, they did feel like it, but <laughs> their excuse was it was in the law of Moses. The law of Moses dictates that we stone her to death. Why do you think they were willing to carry out that law? Because in their minds, they felt like enacting justice on this woman would justify them even though the truth was they're just as much a piece of shit as she was and jesus had to remind them you're a piece of shit too oh you're so you're so gung-ho about throwing stones at her all right cool if you've never done anything bad in your life be the first go ahead and one by one they all saw their own hypocrisy and dropped their stones so that's why people keep going at, at, at Chris Brown. I mean, you see it on TikTok. TikTok is a very unique place, too, because that's where those kind of people gather here. Look look at every creator I've ever seen. I, I find out about their controversy in the comments. They, no matter how cool the video they make, no matter how awesome, entertaining, educational, you always see one comment of, aren't you the guy that said this and that and that one time? And then you go to the search bar and you know, search on the controversy, and it turns out, one, they, were, they weren't even wrong for saying whatever they said. Two, it happened like years ago. Like years ago. Even if they were wrong, years ago. Right? And that happens to me too, by the way. Not just everybody else. It happens to me too. Like, weren't you that guy that did this and said that? It's like, what? <laughs> See, because people always need to find a way to make themselves feel better. By pointing out someone else's evil. But the best people in the world have made peace with their evil. That's the secret. Anyway, I've been seeing a bunch of highlighted comments. Can you put those back up? Sorry, I was uh, ranting. <laughs> um, see how they're uh, duoing here? That's their uh, marketing strategy. Who's duoing? Everyone has the same shadow. Are we capable of what mustache guy did too? Yes. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. I live in... I, how do I say this? I, I do have, like, at the, at the back, back, back of my mind, I do have this lingering fear that if I'm not careful, I would be the, the Nigerian version of, of mustache man. 
I really do like, I think about it a, a decent amount. I really do. Because I, I know how to do it. If I really wanted to do it, I know how to do it. It wouldn't be hard. It wouldn't be hard. But, nah. I choose to be a good person. It's not an easy choice, but I choose it. Speaking of that, have you seen this Christian divine guy? Oh, okay, I remember Christian. He made another video about you uh, a few weeks ago. Oh, did he? Mm, I didn't see it. Oh, well, good for him. Uh, <laughs> that, oh, actually, I should probably be thanking him. That's probably... Um, do, do I got the boost in views? I'm happy about that. If, if that's the case, I appreciate that. You know me. Whenever I poke him, I get more views. So I, I low-key have an incentive to just keep making videos about him. Because so he can keep making videos about me. <laughs> uh, it's a healthy fear. I would be more concerned with you if you didn't have that fear. Right? You know, I got to pat myself on the back a little bit there. Um, not in like a self-gratifying way, but... I do have to remind myself not to... Because it's a slippery slope, man. It's a fucking slippery slope. It's a slippery slope. Slippery slope. It's not hard to become that kind of person. Like, any of you would very easily become the next P. Diddy with that kind of money, power, fame, and connections. I promise you. I'd probably do worse than him. I think I think he wasn't doing it big enough, honestly. If he wanted to really be evil, I mean, we'll... we'll you know, the case is unraveling. We'll hear more of what he was up to. Maybe I'm I'm not thinking as bad as he probably went. But all I heard is one nine-year-old in the 120 people that are showing him. One nine-year-old? <sighs> Please. Could be way more evil than that. <laughs> not to say you should be. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> well, that's good because he said some stupid stuff in there with a lot of potential of... For M videos? What's M I have no idea what M videos. Oh, uh, Christian did? Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Let him make videos about me. I like... Dude, a lot of people make videos about me all the time. I'm always in some TikTok beef that is unrequited. I had to require his, though, because I couldn't miss that opportunity. But, uh, I did. I'm always ignoring... People always, like, mention me in their videos and try to, like, oh, he's wrong about this. He's a this. He's a that. He's this kind of person. He's a grifter. Da, da, da. I don't. Know. I'm not in the in the habit of making people famous. I don't care. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when a, when a much bigger creator hits you up and tries to start war with you, you go to war with him because you benefit. There's only benefit when a bigger creator says something about you. It's only ever benefit. Not much money I made in that month. That was a birthday month for me too. It was a good month. Great month. Probably one of my highest months so far. Um, how does God prepare us for? Uh, such vast amounts of power by by taking you through the suffering required to understand the power that's how god does it that that's again i keep telling you guys this what's the difference between god giving you a blessing and the devil giving you a blessing it's the same blessing the difference is one makes you worthy of the blessing first because if you're not worthy of what you're asking for and you get it when you're not ready for it it will destroy you you it will become your god you will worship it right do you you want to know when you get start making that 10k a month when you genuinely don't need to <laughs> when it's not a big deal anymore when 10k a month is still a big deal like oh my god and then if you get the 10k a month or that first 10k a month when it's still like oh my a big deal to you oh it'll fucking destroy you oh it'll fucking it'll ruin you <laughs> you know so uh, he's our heavenly father, right? That's why he's called our heavenly father in the Bible. He doesn't give keys to a toddler to drive his BMW, right? He he, he gives it to the teenager that's a, that actually has earned a driver's license. The devil wants to give you the BMW keys when you don't have a license because he knows you'll crash it and it'll hurt yourself. You see what I'm saying? That, that's, that's how God does it. That God wants to make sure... You respect the power you're getting so that it doesn't destroy you. How do you deal with handling your own greed and envy, not letting them take over? Oof. I Listen, man, I'll give you my advice, but I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not. I'm probably not even still the person that you should be asking that question. I can't in good conscience tell you that I have 100% control of it. 
You know what I mean? Because I'm a greedy fuck. Like, my goodness. I'm a lot less than I used to be, but shit. My ego is still through the roof. I'm still very much greedy. I don't, I wouldn't say I have envy. If anything, I have too much of an ego to have any envy, you know? But, yeah. Here's how I deal with it, though. This is what I do. I remember two things. One, I don't need to be greedy because I already have all that I need. And I'm not saying that like physically. I'm saying you have to begin to see the universe as your own personal wallet. I, I, I go with the Jesus route. Jesus treated the world like it was his own personal piggy bank. Does that make sense? He never needed for anything because in his mind, it already all, it all already belonged to him. Like that story of when he and um, the disciples were, I forget where they were, but a bunch of Roman soldiers came up to them and went, you owe taxes, pay us um, taxes. Because, you know, Israel at the time was under um, Roman uh, rule. Uh, they, um, they were in the Roman colony. And the Roman soldiers came through and were like, you owe us money, pay your taxes. And Jesus went, oh, do we have any money on us disciples? No? Okay, cool. Peter, do me a favor. You're a fisherman, right? Go. I saw some boats um, over on that lower river before we got to this point. Go, you know, rent a boat. Take it out to the middle of the ocean a little bit. Cast your net on the right side. Pull out some fish. The very first fish you pick up, open its mouth. There's going to be a gold coin in there. And that should be more than enough money to pay both taxes for me and you. Right? That's the approach to life you want to have. Is like, stop trying to reach for more because it's all already yours anyway. Like, I was telling this to my girl the other day. I don't see the money in my account as the only money I have. I really don't. I see the money in a lot of other people's pockets as my money as well. They just, they don't know it yet, but it's my money. It's mine. That's not greed. That's gratitude. There's a difference. Does that make sense? That's like the first thing, right? So that, that stops the reaching out to try to get more, right? That, that creates the fullness in you so you don't try to overfeed. The second thing is remember the point of your entire existence. Remember that you're not just here to collect. You're here to give. You should be more concerned with what you're giving than what you're receiving. Because as long as you keep giving, the receiving part is taken care of. Just remember to keep giving. Remember to keep, like, you should be more concerned with your output than your income. That's what matters the most. That's what you were put on here for. That's what God created you for. That's what matters. You feel me? It's very important. That's, I think, so far, and it's worked for me for years now. It's like, that's how you deal with it. Um, when is your birthday? May the 7th. Um, let's see. I find myself sometimes re resenting those who got more than me with less effort or skill. I used to as well. I really did. Um, especially like growing up in Nigeria, right? I grew up in Nigeria. I, I've been through a lot of hardship in my life. A lot. So I can't sit here and tell you in clear conscience that for many years of my life I didn't look at those people who just had it easier than me you know and even till now there's people that have to literally do a lot less work to get the same things that I have to get and, and, and do for it right like when I was young it was my cousins I was I was envious of like I w I'm the only cousin of all my Cousins, I don't even know how I would say this. Of all my extended family on my mom's side, I am the only one of all my cousins that was born and raised in Nigeria. Everybody else was either born and raised here in America, so they're all citizens. I'm not. Or they were born in America, they were raised a little bit in Nigeria, and then they came back here anyway. My road to America was a lot. Like, I came here when I was 20. I was already a grown man when I came to America. Right. I, I, I was 19, I, I, I was here, and then four months later, I turned 20. You know what I mean? I've been here ever since. But they've had a much easier life than me because of that. Right? I, I had to wear their hand-me-downs growing up. I had to play their PlayStations and their, you know, 
um, uh, uh, Nintendo DS's <laughs> when it was when they were done with it and it was sent to me back at home in Nigeria. All right, so it was envying them at first, and then I grew up and I grew I grew up poor in the midst of rich people, which is one of the best ways to grow up, but also one of the ways that will really teach you how to be discontent. Right, like it's hard to go to your friend's mansion to spend the afternoon and play all the games and, you know, do all these cool things and then go back to your fucking three-bedroom with your parents. And I did that for years. That was my life. I, like, we were so poor at one point, I had to go to my friend's houses just to eat because we didn't have food at the crib, you know? So, for sure, a lot of, a lot of my life, my initial life was filled with a lot of envy. But... I grew out of that very simply because I realized, and maybe this is my ego talking, but I realized that, you know that cliche saying of God <coughs> gives his um, toughest soldiers his hardest assignments, stuff like that? I realized that the suffering creates the character. It's important. The suffering creates the character. I look at, and this is no offense to my family, I love my family, but I look at my cousins and I'm like, yeah. I was better off being raised the way I was and going through the things I did. Far better off, not even close. Because I have a hunger in me to get things done with not just, you know, my goals, my, my problems I want to solve, my, my life, my mission is a lot stronger. I have a stronger why than not just my family, but than, than most people I've ever met. Most people I ever met would not take half the risks I've taken in my life because they don't have as strong a why I do. So I'm grateful for that. I am. If, if, you, if you see yourself going through a longer journey than others, understand it's because you're God's favorite. It's okay. That's what happens when you're God's favorite. Go read your Bible. Read your Bible. It, it becomes very clear. When God loves you, he puts you through quite the fucking journey. Every, every single prophet in the Bible, go and read. Every single one went through a, a harder, thicker, stronger battle. Battles. Series of battles. And it's all your training. It's all part of it. It's all part of the hero's journey. So embrace it. Embrace it. I feel that once I later on surpass those people, I always look at them like, um, that's not me. It, it, you don't even have to think about it like surpassing those people. I hope those, I wish those people the best all the time. I don't care to surpass them or not. I, I just hope they at some point find and accomplish their mission the way I plan to. Right? Because the, the, those people aren't your problem. They're just existing. They're just living. They're just having, I mean, think about it. Of all, all, all the things I've been through in my life, all the suffering, all the pain, all the sacrifices I've had to make, all the risks I've had to take, in my life there's still a lot of people that would look at me and i'm aware of these people in fact some of them i know personally that would look at me in my position and be like damn he had it easy compared to me because like i'm over here like telling you how i grew up poor in the midst of rich people i i had friends that didn't have any rich experiences at all they didn't know what it was like to go to any fast food for fucking lunch with their rich friends parents <laughs> No, their fast food was akara on the side of the road. That was it. It was as far as they got. Akara got to get bread. You know? Maybe maybe if there's a little more money in their pockets one night, they get suya. Oh, suya. But I was getting suya pizza at ShopRite with my, with my friend's rich parents. That's big boy shit compared to what they were living. You know what I mean? So, it's all relative. It's all relative. You don't have to compare. Comparison is the thief of joy. You know, who was it? Dan Pena? Dan Pena was the one that said, of all the seven deadly sins, the one you'll have the least fun with is envy. <laughs> and he was so right about that, bro. He was so right. <laughs> the one you have the least fun with, baby. Um, Let's see. If I showed unconfident behavioral cues, do I um, overcorrect with cockiness? Yeah, that'll work. Absolutely, a cockiness will work. It, it, it's not sustainable, but it will work. Um, that's true. It's not them. It's what they remind me of in myself. Exactly. Exactly. Um, be very careful about how you speak of other people. 
I always tell people, be, be, don't insult anyone. Ins insulting people is, is a weak-minded thing, not just that, because you admit to yourself subconsciously that th that other person has that much of a psychological effect on you for, for, to the point where you're willing to say something bad about them. But on top of that, whenever you insult someone, you give people a peek into your psychology. Because the only thing you can ever insult someone with is something that you genuinely believe would hurt if someone said to you, right? You know how many times people have insulted me and I'm just like, you really think that would hurt me? Oh, that would hurt you, wouldn't it? Right? That's, ugh. <laughs> that's gross. That's, that's, that's envy. So don't allow other people to have that much of an effect on you. It just, it shouldn't mean that much bro it never should never never look at other people and allow them to draw emotions out of you that's weird that's weird you got better things to do college is so big though it's like a mini city center good the bigger the better because then you have multiple opportunities to create whatever you want um are you a red bone uh, what would like light skin, me? Are you talking about? Are you talking about me or that chick that was talking before? But no, I don't think anyone would call me a red bone though. I'm just a dark skinned dude. Thanks, Jace. That helps. No problem, man. You know, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help. Um, Jace, are you a little bit racist? Everybody is. <laughs> Everybody is. And by the way, that is learned behavior. I did not. I was never racist until I came to America. And found out that my color actually means something. I grew up in Nigeria, dude. Everyone where I'm from looks like me, right? The, our separation over there isn't based on race; it's based on tribes. So there's no there's no racism in Nigeria. There's tribalism, right? The Yoruba man doesn't trust the Igbo man. Igbo man doesn't trust the Yoruba man. For the most part, everyone thinks the Alsa man is cool, even though we know he has a kill switch. But you know, it's it's tribal. It's mostly tribal. Um. I didn't realize my skin color could have an emotional effect on other people until I, I started traveling abroad when I was younger. The first time I actually experienced racism was when I was like, I think eight. My dad was living in Europe at the time and we went to go see him in Holland. And yeah, that was interesting. That was very interesting. And I, I, even then I remember thinking, this is stupid. You're going to hate me because of the way I was born? What's wrong with you? But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I came to America much later, and then I realized, yeah, it's, a, it's like actually a big deal here. People make their skin color their identities. It's very interesting. But, uh, yeah, I'm still making adjustments when it comes to that. <laughs> That's so funny. Now I've stopped, but I just wanted to know if there's any... Oh, yeah, I already read, uh, read that one. Um, online most girls either don't reply or they respond and they at some point shoot themselves in the foot like preemptive rejection shit is annoying dude especially you Ryu you're actually a handsome guy so um, online is, is gonna be a little tougher for you cause women are going to auto reject a lot you gotta understand like people keep forgetting the majority of women have below average self esteem so even, even sometimes the hot ones so they're looking for a way to reject you before in before you get a chance to reject them. At least that's what they're thinking in their minds, right? So that, women, women are very fragile when it comes to validation, right? You, uh, give them grace. Uh, Jason replied, "Say you aren't you Muslim and how? That what? Aren't you Muslim and how that not how it works?" How doesn't... Oh, the date thing. Okay, so you asked her on a date. She said, you're Muslim. That's not how it works. And then that's when you say, so, what about it? She's trying to use religion to control your behavior. Be like, so, what about it? I do what I want. That's how you respond. Um, also, what's up with girls getting ungrateful for what you provide in the back end? Oh, that's no, that's that's normal. That's girls. Well, you got to remember to reset your woman's... Um, expectations of relationship from time to time their job is to ask for more your job is to remind them you're getting plenty <laughs> that's that's a big part of relationships and not in like a 
do the bare minimum type of way. I'm talking like women are naturally going to become more entitled as time goes on because they believe their time gives them more tenor. You see what I'm saying? The more time they spend with you in their minds, oh, the more important I am, surely. So I'm going to ask for a raise again, even though I got one last month, right? This is women. They're very ambitious. Like, when it comes to emotional relevance and validation, they become very ambitious. If women could treat their um, emotional relevance the way they treat their money, they would literally be the richest human beings on the planet every time. Because they're go-getters when it comes to that. Your job, though, is to be like the boss, and be like, listen, you got a raise recently. Don't get ungrateful now. I can also very easily just take away your employment. Sorry, buddy. I didn't mean to scare you with that clap. I can also very easily take away your employment. Oh, and by the way, for those of you that don't know, the boys over here. Say hi, buddy. You not fucking with him? All right, bet. Um, I got to take you out soon, don't I? Oh, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take you out. All right. Um, I got to go soon, guys. Me and, me and the boy got to, you know... Do a little walk, probably run into some of his friends. He got a little girlfriend in the, in the um, other apartment building over here. <laughs> Want something about your little girlfriend? Your little golden retriever girlfriend? Anyway, um, let's see. Did you block Ellie? Who's Ellie? I have no idea who that is. Oh, the girl that was just talking to me? Nope, did not block her. I did not do anything. Did she go? She probably left. Um... Let's see. I feel like you got to pull back for a couple of days at some point to reset the back end a little. Yes, literally. You, just, you, you don't got to pull back. You just got to remind them, like, listen, I could also easily just not be here in case you're getting too ungrateful, you know? Um, how is little Mitsukin still? I forget we gave him one of the middle names is Mitsukin. He's doing fine, man. He's chilling. He's getting bigger, which is kind of scary, but, you know, that's my fault. I'll be feeding him dog food and Nigerian food, so that boy getting muscular. That boy getting thick. That boy getting 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 chompy. Um, I'd be overfeeding this dog sometimes though. To be honest, they'd be like, "Oh, give him one giant can." I'm like, two bitch." <laughs> and he's he's such a gobbler. He'll eat everything. He doesn't say no to food. Um. Anyway, uh, Rolo mentioned this, and oh, I remember reading that one. Uh. I was asking because, like, to be honest, I ain't trying to die in the trench by a $20 Walmart drone. That's funny. Um, yo, Jace, check out my DDG post. Uh, did you hurt your chest? No. I'm going to get punched in from time to time. So, I don't know. Maybe. But DDG post? I'll, I'll check it out. Maybe. If I remember. Send it to me on Instagram or something. Or send it to me in my DMs here. Running game is so hard. It's not hard. It's it's not hard. You're just you're you're doing something incorrectly. Whenever something is hard or is feeling hard or getting hard for you, always remember it's not the thing that's hard. It's your understanding of it that's you know you're 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 getting confused somewhere. So the so the better your understanding of something, the less confusing it'll be and the easier it'll get. I promise. Is there a way to tell how a woman views you by their behavior around? you on their period i don't think their period is a good way to judge it though to be honest because women just genuinely generally become more irritating um more irritated um when they're going through those pains and stuff to be fair i guess if she has more respect for you she'll learn to like pull herself back i've always said periods are just for for women that don't respect you, they are an excuse for them to just be a lot more bitchy to you for no reason. When a woman really likes and respects you, even when she's a little more erratic, she will pull back. So I guess use that. Contraceptive would be a better way to judge it. Yes, much better way to judge it. Actually, that's that's very true. Much much better. Um, I heard Christar uh just came back. Not sure though. It could be rumors. Oh the uh. Star of, like, the star of Bethlehem. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, yeah, money management is important to learn. Very. Very, very important to learn. Um, Jay should reply. I already read that one. All in algorithm, indeed. Yeah, ain't ovulating a big factor in what they decide to do? Yes, yes. Ovulation is a better way to judge, too, by the way, because it shows you if there's genuine desire there. If a woman doesn't think of you as her first choice when she's ovulating, then you're probably not the guy. You're, you're probably not the guy. 
Um, do you got to drop the advanced laws of the game? I will. I, that'll probably be the one of the next things I have to drop. Because I, I kind of put all the series in the back so I can start doing these longer essays. I like the longer essays. I like those a lot. And I dedicate a lot of time to like really getting those together. So, you know, I'll probably just do one giant long 30-minute video of the advanced laws of the game just to get that out the way. Yeah, family. Why is Diddy uh, an effed up person breaking the laws of God and violating the rights of others? Simple. Power. I keep telling you guys. Power is what corrupts people. Not that power itself is bad. It's people's relationship with power. In order to be a powerful person and use the power correctly, you have to have discipline. That's what I was just talking about when I talk about God putting you through a longer journey. You have to develop a discipline so that you don't abuse the power you get. Right? Because that's where corrupt people come from. When you put people in power that have no discipline, you're going to corrupt. You're going to abuse it. That's how it works. That's where Diddy comes from. And, and Epstein and Weinstein and all those guys. What was the other Jewish guy's name? I forget. The Sam Brankman Free, that one. They be getting all kissy kissy and touchy during ovulation. Yes. It's, uh, I, depending on the girl, it's either just kissy kissy and touchy or just straight up grape. You ever gotten grape by a girl? Shit. You ever you ever gotten gang graped by different girls? Shit. Watch 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 how their ovulation syncs up and you be in fucking trouble. And no, I'm not saying this like as a way to brag. No, no, this, it's not as fun as you think. It's right, buddy. It's not as fun as you think. It's not. <laughs> uh, I have two bitches like just fucking hold you down and shit. How you gain back respect if you lost and say you show lack of leadership and uh, weak emotionally? Well, you do the opposite of whatever you did that was weak. You got to show the ability to do the opposite of what you were doing that made them think you were weak. Whatever that is, though. It has to be specific to that thing. Um, I was going on. Um, how do you say your name? The Honer? Don't. I don't, I don't even know how to say that. Honer? <laughs> how you doing, though? Uh, I'm just calling you 97. How you doing, 97? I just read The Manipulated Man, and I, know, and I now understand what you said. Uh, when you said you shouldn't take them seriously. Yes. The Manipulated Man book is insane. I know, right? There's a lot more where that came from. After that, go read um, Sperm Wars. See what I'm talking about. Have, you want your mind to be blown? Sperm Wars. Read that shit. You're not going to like it. It's going to hurt, but <laughs> you're going to learn a lot. Um, we got to start a Me Too for Jace. Oh, shit. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> probably win a court case if I took that to court. Real talk. I mean, I'm not going to, obviously, because they're a woman I love, but <laughs> yo! Uh, she say uh, she wouldn't mind dinner as mates. She doing too much. Be like, nah, let me know when you're ready for dinner. As, as not, I don't do that whole friend shit. I have enough friends. I don't need friends. Justice for Jace. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is my story. <laughs> Uh, that's so funny. Um, who is Mustache Guy? Oh, just some guy from Austria that had inspirations of being a painter or something. Some guy. Uh, anyway, well, that's good because he said some stupid stuff. Who did? Who is that? Oh, yeah. Um, Divine. Shout out to Christian Divine. How does God prepare us for such... I already read that one. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, did did he uh, f a nine year old? I don't know what he did to a nine year old, but there's 120 people that have um, pressed charges against Diddy. One of them happens to be a nine year old. So let's see what the hell did he did. Did he do it? Get it? Did he do it? <laughs> um, let's see. The manipulated man changed the way I look at women. It, that's why I keep telling you guys to read these books. It will literally change the way you look at women forever. It will. Because I feel like a lot of men are just too... There's a guy that goes to my jiu-jitsu gym that I need to recommend a book to. And he, he's a young kid, too. He's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a bright young man. He's like 22, super young, amazing fighter, tall guy, lanky. Apparently, he's engaged. He's about to get married at 22 years old. And I'm like, 
I'm about to give him this book and just fuck up his existence. <laughs> Cause you know he's a he's a natural. He's a tall white dude. Um, tall, dark, and handsome, as they say. Dark hair, blue eyes, amazing cheekbones. The only other guy in the gym that has cheekbones as good as mine. So you know he's a handsome dude. And taller than me. He's like 6'4". And you can tell he's just like one of those guys that's clearly been manipulated into the position he's in. Some girl somewhere just caught him and, and sold him the fucking Kool-Aid. And he, he's been drinking it now for years. Poor guy. So I'm going to give him that book and I'm going to I'm gonna ruin his life. <laughs> and, and some poor girl. Smart girl, right? Right? I know, right? Smart girl. Smart. Dimitri, you hit it on the fucking head when you said that. Smart girl. Because she got a sucker. She got a sucker that looks like fucking, what's his name? Henry Cavill. Not as much muscle, but essentially, right? Goddamn sucker. Smart girl. I'm about to give him that book and ruin all her plans. <laughs> I'm going to give him the manipulator, man. I'm going to give him sperm wars. I'm going to give him Rolo Tomasi's um, uh, uh, The Rational Male, Preventive Medicine. And uh, just watch the whole thing burn down. And he's going to go through an existential crisis. He's going to cancel the wedding, obviously. He's probably going to break up with her. Let's see. Let's see. Um, we all react differently when we find out women are not what we thought they were. So let's see. I'm very curious. Don't worry, buddy. I'm going to end this soon so I can take you out. Um, facts, bro. When I see people hating, I'm like, cool. I get you. Have to get your happiness from somewhere. Exactly. Just treat them like little kids. They are. Essentially, they are. I heard someone say that anyone that hates you or anyone that tries to attack your character is essentially just a former version of you. And that never left me. I've always thought of that. Like, and, and ever since I heard that, I can see it everywhere. Anyone that I see like coming at me, I'm just like, that's something I would have said years ago. That is something like 22, 23 year old me would have said. But I'm just mature enough now to know better and not say those same things. You know what I mean? It won't unless she reveals her true nature. Only then he will take the book seriously. I, uh, I don't say that. Don't ruin my fucking vibe here, man, Dimitri. I don't like the fact that you just said that because you're so right. You're so damn right. Like it won't work. Even if I give him these books, he's gonna he's gonna do what every other idiot at his age does and goes, "Not my girl." Like a fucking moron. God damn it, you're right. That's, what he's, that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to go, not my girl. She's an angel. Like an idiot. Fuck. Until she shows him. But that's the thing. I don't want him to waste 10 years in a, in a marriage like that. And then find out later. You know? Because I could just save him now. I could just save him now. What? Why watch this kid devolve into a... A mushy version of himself. Because his wife just poison drips him over the next decade. Poison drip, poison drip, poison drip. Just turns him into this unsexy version of himself. And then he believes me. Like, no, I just want to save him now while he's still young. And he still has a chance to have a harem. Damn. Damn, I hate the fact that you're right. Because he hangs up with this other kid that is like the same way. These are young kids, dude. Like one is twenty two, one is twenty five. They're amazing fighters. They, they they got they really do got a, a fucking long career in this fighting shit if they take it seriously. But they're both fucking idiots. Like I was talking to that other one the other day. He has a mullet. He's a good, cool guy, good dude. But he was talking about some no fab, uh. and I'm like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Oh, why? How does the devil know to just grab them when they're young, man? This is no. Oh, what an idiot! He's gonna become the most, and you can see it on him now, right? Like, so socially uncalibrated. Like we're talking and we're exchanging ideas, and a girl walks by and he just becomes like the most stiff motherfucker. These no fab dudes don't know how weird they look to the rest of us. They don't know how weird they look to the rest of us. They don't know. Did you really expect to get better at talking to women the less you talk to women? That's like saying, I'm going to start shooting 90% from the free throw line. But I never touch basketballs, though. Never. I, I do everything in my power to avoid the basketball gym. What are we... Oh, my God. 
Uh, these kids need direction. They, it's not their fault. They just don't know. They don't realize. Like, the danger isn't two or three years from now. The danger is 10 years from now. It's, 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 a, it's a long enough time frame where you can't see it right now. Oh, my God. He's just going to say, no, my girl, fuck. This just ruined my night. Fuck you, Dimitri. Damn it. Damn. I'm still going to give him the books, though. Six four and blue eyed treat my boy. Hopefully he has the intelligence to see through. He's he's a sharp guy. He is. I just don't know. You know you know you know how the smartest men get dumb when it comes to women, dog. You know how that works. You know he's oh my god. You should see him too. He's a brilliant kid, but oh man, oh no. I'm losing hope. I'm I'm gonna send him five books now just to make myself feel better. God damn it. And I pity them because I know what their life looks like. Oh, yeah, the haters, yeah. So true. Now I know how to feel about um, 100K a month because 10K isn't a lot to me. Exactly. Exactly. Now you got to just exchange that feeling you had for 10K to that 100K and then 100K. Um, bro, not going to lie. You should give it to him. And if he gets burned, he'll run back to it and read it. I mean, yes. But like by that point, it's like. You know what I mean? I'm, it won't be too late, but it's like, look at all this time you've wasted. What are you doing? I, I just want to save him now. I don't want to have, you know, like, just just listen now. It's, it's like the story of Icarus. Like, bro, just don't fly up to the sun. Just don't fly up. Don't don't wait to find out what bad things happen and how the, 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 the wax feathers melt off when you fly too close. Just stay leveled. Just don't... Uh, niggas don't listen, bruh. He has to suffer. <laughs> Bane voice. Okay. He has to suffer. <laughs> I guess, man. You gotta let him drown. I guess. I gotta follow my own advice. Just let him drown a little bit. Let him, let him drink a few cups. And... Oh, the Harley Davidson guys are driving past. That's how you know we gotta go out now. He'll be fine, lol. His prime will be all the way in his late 30s. Let him suffer. I guess. Let him suffer. Um, Let him suffer. Alright, I gotta go. I did not get to all the comments. I'm so sorry, guys. I really am. I did not get to all the comments. But uh, I'll be back Sunday. I'll be back on Sunday. Um, I appreciate you guys for being here with me the whole time. And uh, for those of you that are in the community, we have our call tomorrow, 5 p.m. EDT. Y'all better remember that. If you're not in my private community, what the fuck are you doing? Join. Link in my bio. All that crazy stuff. It's the only link in my bio. It's the only button when you press the link. It's literally right there. So I'll see you guys in the community. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Um, yes, I'll be checking my watch out for you, uh, Dimitri, when I'm done with this walk. It's been Jason's favorite scientist. Do it all this information. Watch you must.